welcome back to my channel and to a brand new episode of Get Thready With Me. If you haven't watched the other videos in this series, Get Thready With Me is basically a sew along video where I take you along with me as I try to sew something new or make something that I've never done before. So today I'm going to be trying to make a swimsuit using a commercial pattern. If you are at all familiar with this channel, you'll know that I'm a little bit scared of using commercial patterns. But in my sewing journey, I thought it was time for me to finally bite the bullet and try and use some patterns particularly easy modern patterns. So I tried this pattern out the other day and I made a bralette and because it was really cute and actually pretty easy to do, I thought that I would try and make another one, but this time I turn it into a swimsuit. So without further ado, let's begin. So the pattern that I'm using is the Jasmine Bralette by lingerie maker Olulu. It's not Olulu, it's Olulu with three H's. The pattern that I'm using is made for lingerie rather than swimwear, but it can be used to make swim tops too if you've got the right materials on hand. The fabric that I'm using is this dinosaur print nylon spandex, which is nice and stretchy and it's appropriate for use in water. However, the fabric will still go slightly see-through when it gets wet, so I'm also going to need some lining. For my lining, I am also using this scrap piece of plain white nylon spandex that I just had lying around that has the same amount of stretch to it as the outer fabric. The next step is to download and print out the pattern. Make sure you're printing out on US letter size and you've ticked this box actual size. When it's printed out, it has this little box that should be one inch across. So measure that to make sure it's right. Next, I needed to decide on my size, which I figured was around a size small, which I obtained by measuring my bust. All the different sizes correspond to different cutting lines. So to get a size small, I cut around this line here. Then I taped the pattern pieces that needed taping together. And this is the full swimsuit pattern with the center front, side front, and the back pieces. And just a tip before you move on, make sure that your bra clasp is only about an inch narrower than the end of the back band. If it's more than one inch narrower, you're gonna get to the end and your bra clasp won't fit on the end of the fabric. So at this stage, you'll need to taper off the end of the band so that it's only an inch wider than your bra clasp. Next, we'll move on to cutting out the fabrics. Now everyone has their own method for cutting out fabric, but the one that works best for me is to place my pattern down on top of my fabric. And then I put some heavy items on top of the piece of paper to stop the paper and the fabrics from moving. And then I cut around the shape using my rotary cutter and my cutting mat. Of course, you can always stick some pins in it and use a pair of fabric scissors or whatever else works for you. I'm also going to need two mirrored pieces of fabric from each of the pattern pieces. And so I do that by folding the fabric over like this. And then each time I'm cutting out my pattern piece, I'm cutting out two pieces, which are mirror images of each other. So in the end, this was the fabric that I ended up cutting out. From the dinosaur fabric, I have two mirrored center front pieces, two mirrored side front pieces, and two mirrored back pieces. From the lining fabric, I have two mirrored center front pieces and two mirrored side front pieces. Now it's time to do some sewing. Starting with just one of each of the center front pieces, we'll start with the left side, but it doesn't matter. I placed them wrong sides together like this so the nice dinosaur fabric is facing outwards. And then I used a basting stitch all the way around the edges. A basting stitch is basically a long straight stitch which is used to temporarily hold together fabrics. With that done, I collected up my remaining center front pieces. I placed the right center front piece right sides together on top of the left piece. Dinosaurs touching and I pinned the three layers of fabric together here. Then I flipped this over and I did the same thing with the lining placing it right sides together on top of the other lining piece. And then I pinned the now four layers of fabric together here. Then I sewed down here using a normal length straight stitch. P.S. Nylon spandex and lycra and linings are all really slippery fabrics and they're really annoying to sew. So don't get mad at yourself if you have to sew really slowly. And sewing pins will be your best friend here, so make sure to use them. Once all the four center front layers were sewn together, I graded the seam, which basically means that I cut away all the excess fabric as close to the stitches as I could to reduce the bulk of fabric at the seam. Then unfolding the center front pieces, this is what we've got so far. Next, I'm going to add the side front pieces. And again, it doesn't matter what side you start with. So with this side front dinosaur fabric piece, I'm going to place it right sides together on top of the right center front, and then I pin it on here. As you'll notice, the two curves don't match up exactly, so using a lot of pins here is key. And pinning together slippery fabrics with curves that don't exactly match is not a lot of fun. <laughs> Once that's pinned together, I flipped it around and now I get to do all of that again. Yay! With the lining piece, I placed the right side front lining 
right sides together on top of the center front lining and again I pinned along here. Next I sewed through the four layers that are sandwiched together using a straight stitch like this. And again I'm going to grade the seam and this time I also included some notches which is basically when you make little snips along the seam like this. Notches basically just allow more flexibility into curved seams. Then I unfolded all of this and it's kind of starting to look like a swimsuit. The next step was to repeat the addition of the side front pieces just on the other side this time. Now the front part of the swimsuit is complete. You can remove the basting stitches at this point by simply snipping them and then pulling them out. For some reason I only decided to do this on the top at this point, but you can remove the basting stitches at any point if they're not first sewn up into the seam allowance. Now it was time to add the back band, which is these pieces. So adding these parts was easy. I simply placed the left side of the band down onto the left side of the swimsuit, right sides touching, pinned it on at this edge, and then I repeated this on the other side, and I sewed the two pieces on like this. I cut away the excess fabric at the seam, and then I finished off these raw edges with my serger. If you don't have a serger, also known as an overlocker, you can finish off the raw edges using a zigzag stitch right on the edges. Or you can use some pinking shears. Or you can leave the edges raw because it doesn't really matter as this seam is going to be hidden on the inside of the garment and it also won't fray. Anyway, this is what serging the edges looks like. With all of the fabric pieces now sewn together, it's time to add the elastic finishing. The elastic is going to be added to both the top and the bottom edges of the swimsuit. So I was debating over using two different methods to add the elastic and I couldn't decide which one I would prefer, so I'm going to do both. In the first method of attaching the elastic, I used an elastic that was about half an inch wide and I applied the elastic to the front side of the swimsuit first. I sewed the elastic on right at the edge of the fabric using a zigzag stitch. And while sewing it on, I also pulled the elastic so that the elastic was stretched more than the fabric. Because I wanted to make sure this swimsuit would stay in place while I was swimming laps, I'm pulling the elastic a little bit tighter than I would if this was going to be a bralette. Also a tip for sewing on elastic with annoyingly slippery fabric Pull the elastic to the side away from the edge as you sew. This will stop the elastic from running off the bottom edge of the swimsuit top as it did here. Also, don't you hate that feeling when you've sewn something together really well only to realize that the bobbin ran out halfway through? <gasps> Hashtag relatable, am I right? Anyway, with the elastic applied to the right side of the bottom of the swimsuit, what I need to do next is to hide it out of the way. This is achieved by folding the elastic over towards the back of the swimsuit like this and then sewing over the top. This technique is also called top stitching. I did this using a zigzag stitch and a thread that matched the color of the dinosaur fabric because these stitches are going to be visible from the outside. Okay, the second method of attaching the elastic is to first apply the elastic to the inside of the swimsuit. I also decided to use a slightly thinner elastic here. This elastic is about 3 eighths of an inch wide. I used a slightly thinner elastic because I thought it would make it easier to contour the elastic around the top of the swimsuit. So first, I zigzag stitch the elastic onto the lining side of the swimsuit. This is probably the trickiest part of the swimsuit, so go slowly and take your time here. Then I flipped the elastic over and I sewed it in place along the top on the right side of the swimsuit. Again, top stitching using a zigzag stitch and a thread that matched the fabric. So now I've got elastic sewn to both the top and the bottom. And I think that for swimwear, I like the second method better for adding elastic, just because it looks a little bit cleaner. But either method works and is technically correct, so use whichever one makes the most sense to you. Next, I tried on the swimsuit to make sure that it fit and also to see if I needed to make the back band shorter. But it looks like it's going to fit pretty perfectly, so I didn't need to make the band any shorter than it was. To add my bra clasp, which by the way, I liberated from an old bra that no longer fit. I lined one end of the back band up with the eyelet side of the bra closure and the other end with the hook side. I slid each of the band's ends into their respective bra closures and then I sewed them on like this. And a tip here for sewing on your bra closures, use a zipper foot or set your needle way over to one side so that you don't accidentally sew through the metal or the plastic of the hooks in the eyes because that'll destroy your needle. The last part is adding straps. I'm actually going to cheat a bit here and use recycled straps that I also cut off that old bra. But if you don't know how to make bra straps on your own, then it is included with the instructions that come with the pattern. First, I had to add a loop of elastic to each of the rings down here so that I could sew the straps onto the bra. Then I attached the front end of each of the straps to the bra at that point where the center front piece and the side front piece met 
just underneath the seam there. I attach the straps on the inside of the bra on top of the elastic by sewing two lines of narrow zigzags over the straps like this. Adding the back ends of the straps is much the same. I attach them to the inside of the swimsuit each two inches away from the back closure, again with two narrow lines of zigzags going over the top of the elastic like this. And that is my swimsuit top done. So the next step is to go and try it on and to test it out at the pool. So I was also really excited about the swimsuit because I also have this matching hat and backpack made out of the same material and because I'm a massive dork, this made me incredibly happy. Also here's the bralette that I made using the exact same method, just replace the nylon spandex with stretchy cotton jersey fabric and use slightly less tension when applying the band elastic to the top and the bottom and you've got yourself a cute bralette. So that brings us to the end of this video, but wait, don't go anywhere just yet because Olulu was kind enough to donate three copies of the pattern for me to give away to my viewers. If you'd like to win a free Jasmine bralette pattern, then you just have to be subscribed to me on YouTube and you have to leave a comment down below. Any comment, just letting me know that you want to win the pattern. And in a week's time, I will pick three winners to receive a copy of this pattern. I'll try and contact the winners on Google+, Plus, but because that never works, I will also be announcing the winners via my social media channels. So follow at least one of them if you want to be notified if you have won. Yeah. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you all so much for the really lovely and funny comments that you guys left on my previous video. Me and Luchi had such a fun time reading all the comments where people were comparing him to other people that he apparently looks like. My favorite was Garfield's owner and if Harry Styles, Elvis, Johnny Depp, Flynn Rider and Jeffree Star all had a baby together. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Thank you to everybody who signed up to become a Patreon supporter over the last couple of weeks. You're such an important part of this community and I couldn't do what I do without you. If you want to sign up to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.